Hello, hello, hey everybody. It's been a long time. You can see I've actually changed quite a bit. I'm no longer running DWM or ST. I'm running Erbst Luft W. I don't know how you pronounce it, but you guys know what I mean. And this is Alacrity, actually. It's really nice. I actually like it. You can see my my Figlet script is broken, but that's my bad. I I think um, <clears throat> I'm, I was running Kali previously. Now I'm running Arch. Um, I run Arch, by the way. And I think it's changed where these scripts are. Um, or I'm sorry, where, where the fonts are stored. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about my new setup. Oh, I will say though, for anyone who, I'm not gonna put this in the title, so there's no way anyone could ever find this, but if you happen to listen to this, and if you install Arch for the first time, this is the first time, no joke, I've ever installed Arch, like base Arch. I've installed Arco Linux and Manjaro, and um, I've even installed Parabola, but I've never actually installed Arch Arch. And if you do that, um, one thing I didn't know, I've never had a problem with uh, Yeti microphones being detected by Linux, ever. And on this, I was like struggling. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And I did all this Googling, all of this stuff to figure out. Uh, basically, I came to a forum where someone was like, oh, it's my NVIDIA drivers. They were compiled to work for an old version of the Linux kernel, so I had to actually downgrade the entire Linux kernel. I was about to downgrade my entire Linux kernel. And the problem was I didn't add myself to the audio group. That was it. Once I did that, everything worked just fine. I couldn't believe I was about to downgrade my Linux kernel. I totally forgot about that. So check that before you start troubleshooting anything else. Anyway, what I'm here to talk about today is I'm here to talk about the signal controversy that's going on. And I didn't script this. It's all just kind of, uh, actually, let me move all this over. I'm running cute browser as well. So, uh, I didn't script this, so it's going to be kind of off the cuff, but basically, oh, you even see here I am trying to troubleshoot the Pulse Audio thing. Uh, long story short, I'll just give you the, the once over, the one liner. A company called Celebrate came out and said they could break signal. Uh, well, they say they could decrypt it, which is vague enough to where um, this headline attracted a lot of attention. People thought what they meant was we've, we've broken signal, it's no longer useful as an app. So this. I, what I'm on right now, this is on the Wayback Machine, you can see here, up at the top left. And this is the original article, okay? So forget about why Signal's so popular, no one cares about that. Basically here, it's just a Jeremiah about how annoying Signal has been to law enforcement. Then here, this is the part that's important, this part that's called cracking the code, right? This part's important. I'm not going to go over the details because the details aren't important, but this is important. All this... Again, the content isn't important. I promise you, that's why I'm not reading it. But it existing is important for a reason that'll become clear in just a second. Look at all this, this is all very important. And that's the end of the article, right? That's the end. Now, why am I on the way back machine? Because moments after Celebrite posted this, they deleted it and they replaced it with this. Oh. This, <laughs> this is the actual Celebrate webpage. I'm not on the Wayback Machine. This is the one that's on there currently, right? And remember that cracking the code section was very important. Why is Signal so popular? That's here. Oh, that's it. There's no more, there's no more to the article. That's it, there's no, where'd the cracking the code part go? Well, that's weird. I thought that was very weird. And that, you know what, you'll also notice the headline is different. Now that word decrypting is gone. Gone. So here's the thing. What happened is this. Celebrate, they released a blog post that got a lot of attention that was unwanted attention. The reason why it was unwanted is because uh, that word decrypting, what people thought it meant was they, again, like I referenced earlier, they broke the actual signal code and signal is now useless as a privacy app. I'm not going to go through all this because I'm, I'm making this video to go through Signal's response, which is on my other tab over there. But uh, This is a very complicated way. No, actually, it's not. I, I shouldn't say that. It's not complicated. Basically, what's happened is they've got a device. The device is unlocked. They physically have it in front of them. They plug it into a machine. They see that Signal stores a database locally on the machine that can be decrypted with a key stored in an Android feature called Key Store, as you see here. And then they take that key and they decrypt the database. And so they can just view 
messages that haven't been deleted on the device itself, right? That's what this is showing here. They're saying, look, we can access these devices. Now, I thought this was very weird. I saw this article before they deleted it. The main reason why I thought it was strange was um, it sounded like they were describing a complicated way to look at messages on a phone you had in your hand that was unlocked that you could open the Signal app on. So why would you have to decrypt a database when you can just open the Signal app? And then when they deleted the article, or I'm sorry, deleted that part of the article, uh, as you can see here, and changed the headline, I thought, did they really post an article about a complex way to view an app you have in front of you that's not locked? And I thought, I just ignored it. I didn't pay any attention to it. I thought to myself, well, it can't be true. It just, it, you know, I, I must be the idiot here. And the reason I wanted to make this video is Moxie Marlinspike himself, our good friend over at Signal, Moxie Zero, he posted this article. We're going to go through it really quickly. No, Celebrate cannot break Signal encryption. Again, uh, their, their first article, let's look at, let's check the headline just to see how misleading it is. I don't think, he goes on to describe it's not necessarily Celebrate's fault. New solution for decrypt, well, that does sound like, actually, that headline does, that, that implies to me that they did break Signal. This one doesn't help it. Yeah, that doesn't imply anything. Just, I mean, again, it says accessing the Signal app, but in their article, they describe you have to have the phone in front of you and it has to be unlocked. So that doesn't really mean anything. Yesterday, the BBC ran a story with a factually untrue headline, Celebrate claimed to have cracked chat apps encryption. This is false. Not only can Celebrate not break Signal encryption, but Celebrate never even claimed to be able to. Well, I don't know about that. It sounds like, I mean, they did that, that did imply it. Uh, anyway. So I'm going to go through a couple of the responses here because they're great. I'm going to start here. Their post, talking about Celebrates. Uh, oh, I guess I should start with actually here because otherwise it won't make sense. This is a situation where someone is holding an unlocked phone in their hands and could simply open the app to look at the messages in it, which is what I thought, but I thought there's no way they actually posted that. Their post was about doing the same thing programmatically, which is equally simple. I, I disagree with that. But they wrote an entire article about the challenges they overcame and concluded that it required extensive research on many different fronts to create new capabilities from scratch. This made us scratch our heads. If this required research, it doesn't inspire much awe for their existing capabilities. It's hard to know how a post like that got out the door or why anyone thought revealing such limited abilities was in their interest. Based on the initial reception, Celebrite must have realized that amateur hour was not a good look and the post was quickly taken down. They then must have realized that a 404 error isn't any better and replaced that again with a vague summary. Now that's what we're talking about here. This is just the first part of the article. And then they just say, we now lawfully access the signal app data. Um, which again isn't true because as Moxie points out, I might skip that paragraph. Um, as he points out, if you have disappearing messages on, it doesn't make a difference. So they can't access anything unless it's physically stored on your device, um, which they could just open the app to see. So here's Moxie's once over. And the reason I wanted to go over this is I was on uh, Brax.me recently. I've talked about it before. Uh, Brax.me, it's a very interesting. I won't say great for reasons I'll get into in a little bit, but it's an interesting community. So uh, please check it out if you're interested. The website is just Brax.me. Uh, but there was a discussion where someone was claiming, based on this article from Celebrate, that Signal was compromised. There's a backdoor to Signal, no longer trust Signal. So I'm going to go through these things Moxie himself has said to re-inspire confidence in Signal. If you're using Signal, no need to worry unless someone has your phone and it's unlocked and you didn't have disappearing messages on. But let's read from Moxie himself because there's no reason for you to trust me. I'm just some guy. If you have your device, Celebrite is not your concern. It's important to understand that any story about Celebrite Physical Analyzer starts with someone other than you physically holding your device with the screen unlocked. Okay, we knew that. Celebrite is not magic. That's a weird, I don't know why he would post that. Imagine someone is physically holding your device with the screen unlocked. If they wanted to create a, or record, I'm sorry, if they wanted to create a record of what's on your device right then, they could simply open each app. Celebrite Physical Analyzer does this. It automates the process, blah, blah, blah. You guys get it. I don't. He should have not post, posted this one. It's just a reiteration of the first one. Celebrite did not accidentally reveal their secrets. I haven't heard that from anyone, but um, that's interesting if they think that. This article and others were written based on a poor interpretation of a Celebrite blog post about adding signal support to Celebrite Physical Analyzer. Celebrite posted something with a lot of detail, then quickly took it down and replaced it with something that has no detail, which we saw before. 
This is not because they revealed anything about some super advanced technique they have developed. This is a situation where someone could just open the app and look at the messages. They took it down for the exact opposite reason. It made them look bad. Articles about this post would have been more appropriately titled, Celebrite accidentally reveals that their technical abilities are as bankrupt as their function in the world. Ouch. Yikes energy from old Moxie Marlin Spike. The claws are out. If you're concerned about a situation where someone else might end up physically holding your device with the screen unlocked in their hands, Signal can still help. Features like disappearing messages and view once media messages allow you to communicate more ephemerally and keep your conversations tidy. It's unfortunate, so I'll just leave this because there's only one paragraph left, I'll just read it. It's unfortunate such misleading and inaccurate stories like these spread so quickly, particularly because so many people will see that headline and so few will see the correction. If you see people confused by this kind of irresponsible reporting, please help them by sharing this post. You know, well, I actually I changed the wording there because I, I didn't want to stumble over my words, but you see the point. Uh, and that's why I'm doing this, because I heard that in Brax.me. This is a, a community of people that attracts those interested in privacy and security. And even there, this Celebrite story was being talked about as a compromise of signal. So I felt it was my responsibility, though every single one of you who will watch this, I will deeply, deeply appreciate. Um, it might not be that many, but I, I feel morally obligated to share with you this information that the story you might be hearing that's now been re-reported, even though Celebrate has admitted by removing their section on what they actually did, which was just decrypting a database with a key stored on the device, someone might think Signal is compromised and that it's no longer safe to use. And this is dangerous. It's dangerous because if someone is convinced Signal isn't secure, they'll look for an alternate solution and they might go to an actually insecure solution which isn't a solution at all, but you know what I mean. They might change what application they're using and end up using an app that's worse for them and offers them no privacy or security. Signal is still a, uh, an excellent solution if you're trying to um, converse securely and privately. They can't, at their own server level, decrypt, decrypt the messages that you're sending or listen to the phone calls that you're making. Um, and they're adding in a feature. I think they talked about this recently. I don't want to well, I don't want to say anything that's untrue, so I'll leave that alone. But they have talked about, in the future, uh, coming up with a way so you don't have to share your number, which is a concern for some people. I don't know why, uh, but they seem to find it very concerning. Um, so really, not only are they still totally fine, nothing sh uh, scary or shocking happened here. They're still completely um, as secure as they were before this article was posted. You know, If something's wrong with them, something's wrong with them, but it hasn't been revealed by this article. Uh, but they're also working on ways to make their app more accessible to people because, like me, they believe in the human right to privacy. So that's all I wanted to say on that. Like I said, I felt obligated to share the article per Moxie's request, and I encourage you to share it as well. Uh, share this story because it's, it's interesting. Uh, but also I wanted to say to those of you who have been here a little while, uh, I mentioned before that I would get back to talking about Brax.me, and I don't want to trash Brax.me, but I found that it's not really the kind of community I'm looking for, and I've had a hard time. I've talked before about Reddit and um, some IRC channels, and I've talked about how none of them are exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm thinking of doing is either starting an IRC server myself, not a Freenode channel, but an actual server. I might uh, have it over Tor, accessible over Tor, um, for, I guess, that added layer of, basically, I don't want to know who you all are or where you are or give anyone an opportunity to um, accidentally do something that would compromise their privacy, so I might host it to where you can access it over tour. Uh, but I, I thought about maybe doing a Tox room as well. Tox is a project I've been looking at that seems really interesting. Um, seems like they offer chat rooms and even voice chat that's encrypted end-to-end. -end. Uh, you can set it up to be encrypted end-to-end. -end. I don't think it is by default. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just comment, let me know. I would love to get to know everyone a little bit more and talk about other video ideas and just what people are interested in. And also, I'm working on things I don't post on here because they're too specific. I'm afraid that, I mean, well, no one would care because they're so specific. They're literally stuff that only I and a few other people are working on. Not because we're super smart, just because we that's the path our lives have taken. Uh, but, you know, if anyone wants to talk about it in a non-video way, <laughs> you know, that might be a place to congregate. And like I said, I'm kind of looking for a community that um, it's more specific to what I'm looking for. Uh, I, I guess I have a lot more specific requests than I realized because I've had such a hard time finding one. I'm thinking about just starting my own. So if that sounds interesting, let me know. Sorry I haven't gone for a while. Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays. If you don't celebrate any holiday, have a good day. And thank you.